Yeah, hello everyone. Thanks for attending this session. I'm Gao Chao. I'm working for Intel. Today we are going to talk about uh, kernel integrity enforcement with H9 in our virtual machine. Okay, let's get started. So here is today's agenda. The first part is about some background. I will explain why address translation integrity is important and what would happen if the integrity can be ensured. The second part is on introduction to HLight. We would introduce the hardware capability and how it change current kind of hardware behavior. In the last part, I would describe the, the HLight based solution to enforce kernel integrity and some security consideration and its secure value. So let's start from address translation integrity. As you know, page table not only translates virtual address to physical address, but also defines some permission control bits in page table entry. For example, the present bit, read write bit, user and supervised bit, and execution disabled bit. Many secure features to enforce access control are built on these permission bits. For example, in current Linux kernel, kernel code and raw data are mapped read only in page table. It can reduce kernel's attack surface. And the kernel also maps its data stack as non-executable. Kernel also use SMAP or SMEP to segregate user and kernel memory access. So what these access control methods are implemented in page table, but page table itself is readable, so it's vulnerable. For example, assuming that an powerful attack is about to access arbitrary memory by exploring some kernel vulnerabilities, it can inject shell code into kernel with following steps. First, you can get page table location from task track. For example, in as a mm struct pointer in task track, and from mm struct we can locate the page table through the page. Then an attacker can overwrite the page table to set kernel code writable. Then it can overwrite the beginning of a syscall with shell code. So as you can see, the integrity of page table and the, or translation is important. If the integrity isn't ensured, access control can be easily bypassed. So let's look at the two typical page table override attack. One is the alias mapping. For example, when virtual address is mapped to a physical page without write permission, I assume a powerful attack already has arbitrary memory access. You can set up an uh, alias mapping to the physical page and uh, write the page. So you can modify the content and maybe introduce some shell code. Then when kernel try to execute the code with the original virtual address, it will get modified the code. So, so the, the other attack is uh, page remapping. In this attack, the adversary doesn't need to modify the real physical page. You just copy the content from original page to a new physical page and uh, modify the content and then redirect the original virtual address to this new physical page. Yeah, some VMMs use EPD to enforce access control and uh, enhance guest kernel security. But as EPT is only responsible for translation from guest physical address to host physical address, it can enforce the translation from guest virtual address to guest physical address. So even with access control in EPT, VM's kernel is still vulnerable to page remapping attack. Yeah, here is an example. You can enforce 
access control at the EPT level, you're reloading the physical page. And uh, but on attackers still can copy the content to another physical page and redirect the guest virtual drive to another guest physical page. So this attack can't be detected by the VMM. VMM doesn't monitor guest page table change. So currently we don't want to monitor guest page table change because it will require VMM to trap for example, move to CS3 instruction and write protect CS3 page and audit each change to the page table. So it's similar to what sh shadow page does. And we, what we, we know it would lead to significant performance penalty. So the part two about uh, h light should HLIT is short for Hypervisor Managed Linear Address Translation. And uh, here is the HLIT specification. If you are interested in it, you can download the spec from this link. The primary goal of the HLIT is to enforce guest translation integrity and uh, prevent page table override attacks. How does HLIT work? Here is the key idea. HLIT allows VMM to specify a virtual address range here, so-called PLR, which means protected linear address, trans linear address range. For virtual address in PLR, the translation is done by a new page table called HLIT instead of the CS3 page table. And HLIT is management by VMM. VMM can use EPT to prevent guest kernel from ch changing HLIT. Other virtual, other virtual drives outside PLR are still translated with the CR3 page table. The main benefits of HLIT are security and efficiency. But the PLR here and the, the HLIT are managed by VMM. And they can be changed by guest OS. Then for guest virtual address in PLR, layer translation is vulnerable to page remapping attack. And it's efficient compared with EPT-based page table protection. Because with HLIT, VMM doesn't need to intercept a change to CS3 page table. Yeah, VMM only needs to specify the PLR and the, the construct the HLIT page table. And this page is about uh, HLIT as a change to a nested page table block. The nested blue box is the legacy nested page table block for given virtual drives, page worker use the CS3 page table to translate the guest virtual address to guest feature address. And the EPG translate the guest feature address to a host feature address. Then the mapping can be cached in TLP. With the HLIT enable, VMM defines the PLR. CPU does a PLR check. If the guest virtual address is in this PLR range, then CPU works with HLIT rather than CS3 page to get a get a page address and I cache the mapping you find. During each line work, CPU would encounter a restart bit. After another CPU restart page work with CS3 page table. And uh, each line also introduce additional checks in EPT. I will talk uh, about them later. So this page is about the HLIT page, page structure. HLIT page structure are almost the same as the X32E page structures. It supports both the five level and four level hierarchy. And the bit 11, which is previously ignored, is repurposed as the restart bit. 
Couldn't this be the result of the page work we started from guess the CS3 piece table? And uh, about uh, page fault, if a page worker encounters non present entry or misconfigure the entry, for example, the reserve bits are set in HLAT page instructions, CPU reports page fault to software with a new page fault error code. The bit 7 means uh, the fault is uh, uh, HLAT terminal fault. And uh, other page for the error code are set as usual. There are two new EPD control bits are defined to help to track alias mapping. One is the pigeon write. Pigeon write allows CPU to update ADBs on page even if they are not writable to software. For example, previously, if write permission is set in EPD entry, the CPU is allowed to write to the page and do ADBs update if the page is used as a page table. But if no write permission, both the software writes and the ADBs update would be delayed and cause EPD violation of the exit. Page in writes introduce a new configuration. If a page is not writable but has a page in write site, then direct software writes are delayed, but CPU update ADBs are allowed. Basically, page write improve efficiency if VM memory to read only guess the page table and the EPT. You can reduce VM exit due to ADBs update and the VM memory don't need to do ADBs emulation. So the other piece is verify page write. Verify page write enforce that all if guest page structure page encounters during next page table work as PW site and EPT. Otherwise, generates an EPT violation. Specifically, this page is set as Verify page and write on the EPT here, and CPU would verify that all the guest page table page has page in, has PW site on the EPT. Otherwise, an EPT is EPT violation is generated. VM can use VPW and the PW. These two EPD control bits to prevent memory access through alias mapping. For example, for memory to be protected, VMM said VPW flag and the EPT, and said PW flag for HLAT page structure and the EPT. Then the protected memory can only be accessed through HLAT. If an attacker set up alias mapping in CR3 piece table, to access a protected memory. Memory access to protected memory would cause EPT violation due to there's no PW flag in the alias mapping set up by an attacker. Let's look at how to use H9 to reinforce kernel integrity. This is the high level architecture of using HNIT to protect translation for kernel text and raw data. So here we have a VMM and the virtual machine and a secure kernel for the virtual machine. In a virtual machine, there are two page tables to translate against a virtual device. One is the legacy CS3 page table, and then now is the only user to translate. Uh, for example, user memory, read, write data, and the stack, and the kernel code and the raw data is uh, protected and translated with uh, HNet. Now HNet enforce read-only mappings on kernel text and raw data. HNet itself is also read-only in in the normal kernel view and read-write in the secure kernel. When normal kernel wants to set up a new protected mapping. 
for tier that exists in my opinion, it can talk with secure kernel through this communication channel. Then the secure kernel can audit the request and change each letter accordingly. In this architecture, we don't allow normal kernel to modify each letter page table because if the normal kernel can modify each letter page table, the translation for kernel text and the raw data can be redirected. A trusted entity is required to manage each night page structures. We rely on a secure kernel in this design, but the trusted entity can also be the VM. In that case, there are a lot of intrusive changes, such as some policies needed to be implemented inside the VM. Through so this uh, HNIT management hub core, Secure Kernel can set, uh, can set uh, VPW flag for kernel attacks and raw data and the EPT, and uh, set uh, PW flag for HNIT page structures on the EPT. And uh, yeah, by ensuring that the only Secure Kernel can invoke this hub core, normal kernel can't set up Linux mapping to access the protected memory. Sometimes the guest kernel needs to set up and uh, tear down protected mapping inside the runtime. For example, when guest loads a new module, you would insert some executable code in your kernel and uh, for the new code, their translation also needs to be protected. During module unloading, we need to tear down the protected mappings such that the virtual address range and the memory can be reused. But we need to avoid avoid abuse of tear down operation. For example, an attack can just uh, request a secure kernel to tear down protected mapping for kernel code and then modify kernel code. One feasible solution is we can utilize model based execution control for EPT. For example, secure kernel ensures code has correct signature when setting up protected mappings and give executable permission in supervised mode. And if protection mapping is torn down, then revoke executable permission in supervisor mode. Actually, in use kernel, there are some valid and some important changes to kernel tax and runtime. For example, function tracing for debugging, jump label, and auto radius. It should be allowed, but we can't allow normal kernel to do text patching directly. Ideally, text patching needs to be done in secure kernel, and the secure kernel can implement an uh, approved policy to audit the request based on the location to patch and the order patch does. So what's the security values of this solution? Yeah, basically it defends against code injection attacks like a hook, Cisco, or override IDT, and the raise the bar of exploiting kernel vulnerabilities. And uh, with this solution, even if Lama kernel is compromised, VMM with secure kernel can ensure the integrity of Lama of Lama kernel's code and the raw data. This is a summary to this session. First, restricting access to kernel code and raw data can reduce the attack surface of kernel. But page table attacks can bypass such restrictions. And the HNIT provides an efficient way to reinforce the integrity of a guest translation. And the VMM can use HNIT and the EPT control bits to enforce the integrity of a kernel code and raw data. Yeah, this is the last page. 
next wall I have do you have any question?